Hey everyone, this is Toxic Tuna back with another Life is Strange Theory video, and today I think it's about time we discuss one of the main antagonists of Life is Strange, that being Nathan Prescott. Now, as we all know, Nathan Prescott is sort of a dick. There's no doubt that he makes Max's life much more difficult than it needs to be, and he's behind some rather strange occurrences in Arcadia Bay. But, I do think that though he comes from a rich family, he lives a rather challenging life, and he may not be as bad as we truly believe. So, here's one example of that. Let's go all the way back to episode 1 of Life is Strange, where Nathan shoots Chloe inside of the girl's bathroom. First of all, just the dialogue that is said before Chloe walks in makes me think that Nathan doesn't really want to do what he's about to do. He says to himself, don't be afraid. Well, why should he be? He's the one with the gun. He's prepping himself for what is about to happen, and I just can't help but think someone is making him do it. And that sort of coincides with what he says when he's conversing with Chloe later on. I'm so sick of people trying to control me! So, who are these people that he's referring to? Well, we'll come back to that in a little bit. For now, let's stay on this beginning scene. So, during the fight with Chloe, Nathan obviously ends it by shooting her, prompting Max to stick out her hand and, for the first time ever, rewind time and thus save Chloe. Now, many of us, including myself, just automatically assume that Nathan meant to shoot Chloe, but really, I don't think that's the case at all. Watching this scene again, it's clear that Chloe pushes Nathan, which caused him to clinch his grip, thus firing the gun. Now listen to what is said right after the shooting. This is something I just barely noticed since Max's dialogue is being heard at the exact same time. Oh, shit! No! No, he has a gun! Oh shit! No, 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 followed by him kneeling down to see if she's alive? Why would he do or say any of that if he did it on purpose? This makes me believe that Chloe being shot is a complete accident, and therefore Nathan is not necessarily a killer. Now, let's go over that question I brought up before regarding who controls Nathan. So, in the parking lot when Max is confronted by Nathan, he says to her this. Nobody tells me what to do! Not my parents, not the principal, that! or that whore right in the bathroom! Now! So really, I think this is sort of the answer to the question we had. He's being controlled by his parents, Principal Wells, and that whore in the bathroom, aka Chloe Price. So let's go over these three people. So Chloe pressuring Nathan obviously makes sense, considering he's most likely referring to what just happened in the bathroom, where Chloe tried to extort him for money just to keep quiet about prior events. Principal Wells also tries to control Nathan. We can see that based on the letters we found on his computer warning him about his actions in class and threatening expulsion. However, none of that seems to hit Nathan's student file, and that's most likely a result of threatening letters sent to Principal Wells by Nathan's dad, Sean Prescott. And Sean just happens to be the last person mentioned to be controlling Nathan. But how so? Well, the problem is there's not too much known about Sean Prescott. But from what we've seen, controlling definitely would be an accurate term to describe him. So what's going on here? Well, if I had to guess, Sean Prescott is sort of using his son to gather information as to what exactly is going on in Arcadia Bay. Remember that things aren't really going too well out there, with the fish disappearing, strange weather patterns, and now Rachel Amber missing. I think that Sean is a bit worried about his future wealth. After all, building a housing development at a place where everyone is looking to leave is not too great for business. Just wait until he hears that a monster tornado is about to level the entire town. I'm gonna say he'd shit his pants if he heard that. Now, based on the conversation we had with Nathan at the Two Whales Diner in episode 4, it's clear that Nathan and his father don't exactly get along too well. Why? So you can pretend to care, hmm? Spoiler alert, he's an asshole! So really, I think that is where a good part of Nathan's anger comes from. His father, Sean, has noticed that strange things are going on in Arcadia Bay, and may have correlated that to Blackwell Academy. So he's forcing Nathan to do a lot of bizarre things just to get to the bottom of it. I think that, coupled with Nathan's possible psychological issues, have really made him into the character that he portrays in the game. Now, going forward from all that, we learn that Nathan has another interesting affiliation with one of the characters from Life is Strange, that being our short-fused high school police officer friend, David Madsen. While snooping through Principal Bell's files, we discover that Nathan and David were working almost as a team. However, it's pretty easy to see they both had very different agendas. Just looking at the files that David keeps, it's clear that he's not looking to uncover some sort of large time-traveling mystery. Instead, he's focused on something rather trivial at this point, which is drugs in Blackwell Academy. On the other hand, Nathan is doing the exact opposite. Literally, he's selling drugs in Blackwell Academy. 
How can two people on the same team be doing two completely different things? Well, either David has no clue what Nathan is doing, or he could possibly be using him as a sort of sting operation to collect information on actual drug dealers. After all, Chloe mentioned that Nathan sells drugs laced with laxatives. Is that something a reputable drug dealer would do? I guess there's probably no such thing as a reputable drug dealer, but you get the point. It's sort of almost like he's punishing those who use drugs, right? So with all this being said, how can we explain something like Rachel in the Dark Room? Well, this sort of goes back to my theory that Rachel Amber can travel through time. So dark rooms were once used in photography to allow photos to properly develop. Due to updated technologies, dark rooms are not really necessary any longer, but are still kept in places such as schools, most likely as a hands-on history lesson about the art of photography. So what I'm getting at here is a dark room is full of photos, and if Rachel Amber has the same ability as Max to jump into photos, it's completely possible that she did so in the dark room. Given that Nathan has been following her with the help of David Madsen, it would make sense that one or the other would eventually witness this happening. One interesting thought is that it could be possible that Nathan saw this occurrence using surveillance cameras put in by David Madsen. Though there is plans to officially put in a camera system, I don't think I would put it past David to secretly install cameras without anyone's consent. After all, he did that to his own family. Further evidence that there might be cameras comes from that same scene we were discussing before. How did Nathan know that Max took that photograph? Even if we choose the option to not notify Principal Wells of the incident, he still confronts Max about hiding in the bathroom. Now, when he falls to the ground while Max is escaping, he does kick Max's ripped up photograph, but look at what happens. He barely looks at it, maybe for about a second or two, and the photo was just one half of the back of Max's head. And even if he didn't miraculously identify her from that, it still wouldn't explain how he knew she was taking photographs in the bathroom. So who knows, maybe David's desperation for evidence and the fact that he thought Rachel was a drug mule for a local dealer led him to install surveillance cameras in some of the girls' bathrooms. Alright guys, with that, what do you think? Do you think it's possible that Nathan is more of a puppet with his father pulling the strings? Or do you think he's as evil as this game makes him out to be? Please leave a comment and let me know. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. I can't thank you all enough for all the support. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and check out some of my other videos. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll be sure to see you in the next one. Stay awesome guys.